bonsoir and welcome to my thesis exhibition. Tonight I'm going to share with you the culmination of the last three years of working ardently to attain my MFA in painting. In many ways, I feel that this time inspires us to lean into technology and there is even more of a connectedness. So I'm so happy for us all to be together this evening and to share my work with you. Meditations Upon Nature is a series painted mostly in plain air, as well as from memory of moments of intense and mindful observation, engendered by these actual landscapes and in the landscapes of my memories, the paintings are containers of my transcendence. In my sanctuary, in nature, I am in my cathedral. There I find peace. Aspen Trees of Prayer is inspired by memories of being within aspen tree groves with dappled sunlight. Every summer for our family reunion on my maternal side, we pulled up our gleaming silver airstreams to a campsite surrounded by wildflower fields and hiking trails, accentuated with pine trees and aspen groves that appeared to have inky black watchful eyes. Music is in this painting. Paper music scores appear throughout the upper one-third quadrant. I first incorporated music into my work after the muses spoke to me in a dream. When I left Utah to attend Savannah College of Art and Design in 1998 to study painting, I was terribly homesick and I could not afford many calling cards. I wrote letters to my family and friends and I anxiously awaited their replies. At night, I dreamt of them. I could hear my grandmother and mom playing the piano and images of music notes filtered through scenes of camping and being in the wild. I realized the dream by attaching sheet music as a matrix to my canvases. Even now, when I return to the aspen groves of Wyoming, I am entranced into a meditative state. Painting in plain air in the Savannah, Georgia marsh has brought me back to my roots of creating within nature and it feels like a proverbial return home to my authentic self. Recently, I woke up very early on a Sunday morning and I felt a strong pull to just see something beautiful. By six o'clock, I was driving towards Tybee Island with the windows down, salty air in my lungs, and music drifting through the early morning sky. I drove by Lazaretto Creek and she beckoned me to paint her. I felt like I was at the edge of the world at the precipice of that fishing pier with the surrounding water Prussian blue. Only a foot of wooden dock separated me from deep water. I described the morning sun with my brushes and oil paints. This act of creation served as my morning meditation. It was Holy Communion. In the writing life, Annie Dillard articulates that one must know your own bones and quotes Thoreau as stating, pursue, keep up with, circle round and round your life, know your own bone, gnaw at it, bury it, unearth it, and gnaw at it still. These are my bones, the photographic images that come back to me as clearly as when they happened, the light of Wyoming, the storms, the manila construction paper I drew on with crimps for hours and hours as a child. In fields of Wyoming soul roots, I painted the land our family staked tents on and built fires that lit up the night sky with glittering flames, laughter, and storytelling while camping. The dandelions in front of my grandparents' home have always been significant to me with their delicate tufts and wishful symbolism. I saw rainbows of hues from an early age. In Wyoming landscape soul roots, the distance is slightly covered by pine trees I watched grow from saplings to maturity over the years. I sought to express the feelings of the sublime in this painting and also in the fields of Wyoming. Sepia and Sienna high flow acrylics composed the base of each work. I was mindful of the darkness needed for contrast to the bright, and I purposefully used deeper hues in both works than I had prior in any other painting. Gold powder I purchased in Italy creates the luminosity of the sunset. I subvert mimetic atmospheric perspective by keeping the middle ground as merged, even more so than the background. 
This increases the tonal unity and is the color language of the mystical, of one thing changing into another, of metamorphosis. This landscape formed me and continues to form me. Light passing through matter is the language of the spiritual. These landscapes contain every feeling I had as a young aspiring artist with grand hopes of living the American dream with my art. At 17 years old, I was leaving to embark on my quest of becoming a professional artist. My plane ticket to Savannah was secured and a presidential scholarship to study painting made my dream of attending SCAD a reality. I was scared. Viscerally, I felt fear and panic. How could I do this alone, without knowing anyone in Savannah, with just the money I had saved from painting murals over the summer to sustain me? With these questions running wildly in my mind, I went into an aspen grove wilderness near my Wyoming home. There I found comfort. I sat within a blinding golden field and sketched with my favorite 4B and 6B pencils in a 5 by 7 inch sketch journal. I formed the cadmium red poppies with delicate mark making, the paper thin wrinkly blooms dancing before me with the sway of the gentle wind and in harmonic contrast to the cerulean blue sky. Poppies became my signifier, representing the fire in my belly, and I paint them often from this memory. Traditional and non-traditional gold accent the composition to depict the golden hour with rays of light reaching down and touching the poppies in the distance. This painting is a hybrid of the poppies of my youth and the poppies that grew at the Eiffel Tower in Paris when I lived there. In this painting, I equally focus my attention on the darkness with hues of violet, sienna, and sepia. Sheet music of Vivaldi's Four Seasons is visible at the hopeful horizon line. In the field at 17 years old, Cross-legged in the grass, I softly recited Robert Frost's poem, Two Roads Diverged in a Yellow Wood. This was my crossroad in 1997, the summer before I would leave Utah to embark upon my dream of attending SCAD and becoming a successful artist. At that moment, a doe appeared, out of nowhere. It was then that I knew everything would be okay. My fear dissipated. She was my omen. Recently, I painted her in an aspen tree grove with wildflowers of my youth surrounding her. Professor Stephen Knutson mentioned that he thought she was my self-portrait. After he noted this, I saw her in this regard as well. It wasn't my intent, but she was. She is everything I have protected, and she has an escape hatch, identifiable by dappled light behind her, leading to an aspen tree grove in the horizon line where divinity waits. She will survive, no matter what comes her way. The three red poppies in the foreground symbolize my sister, brother, and me, and a single delicate poppy bloom above them represents my mother. The doe is alert, intelligent, and prepared for survival. She will be okay, as would I. I often think of Jackson Pollock when I recall my summer spent in Wyoming. I can see him in those wide open spaces out west, cans of house paint and large brushes poetically dripping onto raw canvas. I think the western landscape influenced me as it did his work. I crave large canvas and tactile delicious paint. The paint is applied as a symphony, only as opposed to his drips, I pour and splatter my pain, and my thoughts and feelings are released with it. Savannah Marsh Nocturne was painted in an almost constant state of melancholy. I find melancholy delicious and inspiring, and I sit in it, observing as in meditation. While painting each layer, I listen to nocturnes, hence the title. I painted layer by layer, invoking the energy and hues of the marsh I had recently visited and studied the stretch of land between Savannah and Tybee Island. And now we are through the winter months and my paintings are vibrant with the energy of love and hope. When I am peaceful, residing in love, the palette changes to indicate the state of being. Gold will lace the sky and landscape. 
I began incorporating gold into my work after my MA studies where I studied and wrote empirical research on the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. I described the posterity of the mural program in the nave and transept. The use of gold to convey divinity in halos, accenting triptychs, and symbolizing enlightenment translates into my work as I embellish nature with traditional gold leaf and non-traditional alkyd and gold powders. Nature is my cathedral too. Moon River began as an unstretched canvas in my studio. I kept trying to force the painting from memories of Moon River in Savannah, Georgia, but it felt inauthentic after painting in plain air the week prior. So I took this large scale painting into the marsh off the fishing pier at Moon River and I painted her in the marsh grass. The clouds were whispery, angelic, and the soil that sprayed onto the canvas only added to the authenticity of the moment of creation. A tiny moth fluttered by and left tiny imprints of her presence before flying away. I began my thesis with a quote about love by Joseph Boyce, and I want to end my thesis with love. What do I think my life and my journey in art has taught me thus far above all else? That I am love, that my work serves as a love letter to God and humanity, that I am enough that we all are. Love does not just reside within romantic relationships. It's in our friendships, our sisterhood, and our brotherhood, the tribes we create. As Susan Piver articulates in her book, The Four Noble Truths of Love, with an ongoing meditation practice then, you discover that you are also practicing how to love. Your understanding of love itself will deepen in a way that is non-conceptual, non-intellectual, and visceral. Thank you for being here with me tonight and supporting my path as an artist and also as an MFA candidate at Savannah College of Art and Design. I wish you all health and to be safe and be hopeful. Stay positive. Love and light.